We're back in the shack today with a new Not A Ham radio from our friends over at TalkPod. This one's going to be a little bit different because this is virtual ham radio, which is a little bit different than the 4G POC push to talk on cell radios and a little bit different than ham radio. But I still think there's some value in this for a certain segment of our population of hams. So let's get over to the workbench, open this thing up and figure out just where it slots in. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. All right, I'm over on the bench side. Before we get too far, leave a comment down below what you think of things like these push to talk over cell radios because there is a stigma in the community and I wanna see what your opinion is before and what your opinion is after watching this video. And hopefully we've made some kind of change there. I don't know, because I'm with you. These are not real ham radios. Let's, let's put that on the table first. These are not real ham radios, but I think they've got value. I'm gonna keep saying that until the end of the video when I know for sure, and then I might say it one more time. So these are beta radios. Thank you for joining the beta program. So this is a radio that isn't necessarily out just yet at the time of me receiving it. However, it might be ready to go. Connecting to groups and test calls, battery assembly, power up. Please be patient. It does take a minute to register with the cellular carrier, explore user features, personalizing your call sign, data plan, perfect. So actually, this is actually really good that they sent along some information on what you can actually do with these guys here. I, I've said it before on streams, Link Poon. I'm not a fan of the name. I actually told them this about a year ago. Please change that name. That word Poon means something different in the United States. And I know, I say solder when I should say solder, and solder in the U.S. is different than solder in the U.K. and other affiliated pre uh, post-colonization post countries. I, I get it. Back to the desk. All right, so they said put the battery in. I think that's kind of obvious. It is that Motorola green color, and yes, there are finger holes there. I don't know why I wasn't using them. So let's put the battery in. Oh, the battery's USB-C. Already better than any other ham radio out there. Oh, contractual obligations. Ha! Screw that. I don't have to take it off anymore, because that's all I can get off. So now I've got a, a screen protector on there until I don't have a screen protector on there anymore. I'll show them. It's a decent size. I thought it was gonna look a little bit different, but it doesn't. There is a programming cable included. That's interesting. I wonder why we would need a programming cable. Looks like a standard K connector. We have a USB wall wart charger. Let's see what this is. Output five volts, one amp. So plenty good enough for the battery that's in there. We have a USB to USB A to USB C cable. Yeah, not a whole lot of accessories come with this, which is actually pretty good because you really don't need them for, for where I think this is headed. There's an open door. Why did they give me a that's kinda it's kinda rubbery. Am I am I missing something here? Is it under the battery? Oh, it is under the battery for the SIM cards. Ha! Huh. That's right, because this is not a ham radio. This is actually a kind of a little miniature cell phone. So you've got room for SIM cards in there. Let's put the battery cover on. There we go. Battery cover is, the, the SIM card cover is on. Put the battery back in place. There is a belt clip thing. All right, that's installed. We have our, litty, lit, uh, litter. We have our little mini antenna here. I think that's more just a gimmick to make you feel like it's a radio. There's probably nothing in there. It's an SMA connector. I mean, it does it does need an antenna to do what it's doing because technically this is RF. For all of you purists out there, it actually is using real RF. So we've got that. And you can actually get these in two meter, 70 centimeter form. And they work pretty well if you're trying to connect to like an all-star node or a DMR hotspot inside of your ham shack where you don't really need to be burdened by a big antenna. So that takes care of that, that takes care of that. And then we have the lanyard. Let's put that on there. All right, now we've got the lanyard. This radio is not getting away. Put all the rest of these accessories back in the box. All right, let's do the out of box experience. Let's turn it on together and see what happens. Talk pod. And this is where it said it's gonna take it some time to register and connect to the cellular network. So I'll be back after it's registered. User loading success. Wow, that's loud. All right, we've got some default talk groups in there and they've got some suggested talk groups for us to try. And this is where I think this is gonna get interesting. Let's do 
one four six five two zero, which is your two meter national calling frequency. And since this isn't a ham radio, I don't actually need to use my ham radio call sign. Let's make first contact. I'm on the TalkPod N39 Plus. I'm trying out the Link Poon system for the first time. Anybody out there? It says it's still transmitting. Hello? Microphone's still picking up. So you can see it looks like it's still trying to transmit on there. Channel A transmitting, 36 seconds. And you can see the volume bar going. Yeah, wow. So we appear to be stuck in transmit. We hit the one minute mark. Let's turn that off. Power off. Turn it back on. And this is the second power up, so it shouldn't take as long as the first time. Smash it, use it, use it. Pretty sure you see your girl for your sound that right here in Massachusetts also. Well, that was somebody in Massachusetts. Let's try it again. Well, who else is out there today on 14652? Nobody. Anybody out there? Big put you out there today? Howdy, howdy. This is Steve. How are you? Okay, it did release that time. Now, good afternoon. You've got Steve here also in Massachusetts. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Sounds like you're in Massachusetts. I am in Colorado. It's been loud and clear here. Yeah, it's kind of a gloomy day, but it's been a beautiful summer here in Massachusetts. Uh, a lot of fires up uh, north of us in Canada and stuff. A little hazy a few days now, but besides that, uh, it's not the bad here. So this is my first time trying one of these things out. Uh, I'm getting what appears to be like a little tiny dropout as you're talking. Is that something normal to experience here? No, not that I've experienced. I don't know. Oh, maybe I'm going to drop off my key. It seems like I've got good modulation coming out, but it could be internet glitch on it. It, it certainly could be. I'm on, uh, as you know, 146.520. Is there another talk group out here? Any any place, you know, where all the fun stuff happens? Or is this the place? Well, I don't know. I make a lot of contacts here. I don't really... Uh, there's some other channels, you know, or groups or whatever you want to call it. All right, that was pretty cool. That was Steve in Colorado talking to Steve in Massachusetts. And I didn't have to do much other than join the talk group, 146.520. It looks a lot like a ham radio frequency. These are virtual ham radios. And I'm starting to pick up on what they're putting down with these guys. And I'll give you a little clue in a second here. How are you guys feeling about this at this point in the video? Do you think this is the, the greatest thing ever? Do you think this is still not real ham radio? I mean, it's not real ham radio, but it is real radio and it is the future like it or not. Let's try that. Uh, I don't know. Let's just pick a number. Let's do 144390, which is the normal APRS frequency over here in the U.S. And I'm not going to hear APRS. I, I would hope I'm not going to hear APRS on this. But this is Steve in Colorado on 144390. Anybody around? It gave me a number 7107155214. That appears to be my cellular phone number, but it's registered to the radio, so probably not a good idea to try and call that on the phone. But we might actually try that later on in the video. Well, since this is all about experimentation, let's start playing around and seeing what we can play around with. So the screen's got a good timeout. The up and down buttons don't really seem to do much while you're not in there. The, the big red button right now means don't do anything at all. It means shut the screen off. So we've got menus, we've got group A, Group B, and there's some, some groups under there that didn't switch us from the A to the B VFO. Call log. KBHA is what he said he was, KBHA3. Settings, there we go. This is where the fun gets in. All right, let's see. We got general settings, screen off after 45 seconds, timeout timer 60 seconds, operating mode power save, AB channel sync, so I can have it be one channel or Two separate channels, language of English. Let's go back so that red button is back when you're in the menus, which I kind of expected. Audio settings, send tone. Ooh, let's turn that. Make sure that's on. Good. Send tone select. Oh, it's got the Quindar tones on it. Let's go in and see if we can change it. End tone is on. 
end tone select is end default. So there's your audio settings. Shortcut key, side key one and side key three. Well, side key one is PTT, side key two, side key three, let's see. Side key two is call log, keypad log, group info. And then side key three, call log, keypad log, group info, same choices. And then pressing pound on the keypad can be a lock or nothing. All right, so we'll leave that the way it is. Not a whole lot of settings in there. About, user info, call sign. So I can change that, I think. Yep, let's delete that out of there. And let's just do something simple like my name. Keyboard's easy to use. Keys have a good feel to them. Confirm, confirm. Saving, changes saved. Okay, so now when I show up in your log, I will have a name. Device info, N39+, plus, software 1.02, hardware E29, my IMEI number, my uptime, virtual ham radio, vham.net is the link poon system. Let's take a look at vham.net also. ICC ID, every month 0M, used 0M, so that's megabytes, I guess. Megabytes, megabits. They also give us 149025 as a frequency. That turned red when I put it in there. Okay, so it, it needed to connect first. Okay, so you punch in your frequency and then it connects to the talk group and it's showing me that there are three people in the talk group. So I keyed up, I kerchunked a virtual ham radio talk group. This is Steve on 149.025, anybody around? He's got a little timer there that says how long ago I've heard anything and 10 seconds ago I sent a message out. Can we get uh, group info? Side key two is now gonna be group info. Group members. So we've got Brian in Fairfield, Pennsylvania. We've got me, and we've got AT3VDB inside of this group. So you can see that there are people in there, but they might not be near their radios. Edit group, virtual code group name. I don't wanna change that out. Okay, so I just backed it out and didn't do it. Long press backs it out also without confirming. All right, so I did not make any changes to the group. I just looked to see that I could. This is where it gets interesting. I want to try out the Link Poon software. I want to try out the, the vham.net that they showed in the radio, vham.net. And it takes me right here to talkpod.com slash pages slash Link Poon. The first time I tried it, it didn't work. So if it doesn't work for you, just try again, which is kind of like the thing with ham radio anyway. And so when you get to their website, that other tab that I had was me going to TalkPod directly to look up Link Poon, as opposed to going to vham.net, which it shows in the radio. There is a bunch of information here on this thing. They have TPRS, so you have a similar service to APRS, but it's not APRS. And then you can talk to different talk groups and see where people are, and you can see what the link list is for where you're linked. Website looks pretty good. What is Link Poon Virtual Amateur App? Y'all can read that on your own if you'd like. There's a variety of devices. Looks like there's even Regular cell phones, that's a 4G cell phone, that's a 5G smartphone, there's a radio. This is what I wish we would do with ham radio. Imagine a ham radio that had an actual screen on it that you could put apps on, that you could do app type things and the development and the advancement of the hobby that would come with something like that. Yeah, you, you can keep your older radios, you get off my lawn types, but what we need is development to embrace the newer generations. Body cam, that's cool. So here's where it gets pretty cool. The virtual channel list. Let's look in the US and see what they have. USA calling frequency 14652. And then we have a couple of chat channels that are sub channels of the frequency with password. So channel one through five. And then we've got UHF calling frequency with sub channels. Then we've got ZMR. I'm guessing the Z is like Zello mobile radio or something, but this is new to me. So I don't know. So you put in your talk group number 851065. And then they've got GMRS and FRS channels mimicked for the, the full-on GMRS or FRS virtual experience. And then we have one for each state. So Alabama, as an example, 146520 with a password of 75 will get you into the Alabama room. I'm in Colorado, so the password's 42. And that's it for U.S. But I don't want to talk to people in the U.S. I already talk to all you people all the time. Let's look at 
Spain. Spain has a calling frequency, 145.530. Germany. Click. Germany's not clickable. France. Canada. 146.302. One for each province. Same thing on UHF. So they're trying to do a really good job of mimicking what's already out there. Do they have the PMR frequencies? They do have the PMR frequencies in the UK. Nice. And these do not cross over. These don't link to, like, you know, land side PMR. These are all virtual different regions. So you can talk to people in your region or you can talk to people from far away from your region. So it also looks like they're working with the M1KE and you can have a virtual app on your phone and then here is the same software running on the google pixel so you can kind of see that they're connecting back and forth between other services so there is some future in this all right hopefully you have put your comments in in the beginning of the video and now we're at the end of the video and you've kind of seen a little bit about it what i am going to do is i'm going to share my opinion on what i think this is good for and why i think this is actually actually kind of a useful novel new pretty slick thing if you have an aging parent or grandparent who is in a nursing home who enjoyed ham radio and can no longer enjoy ham radio because the nursing home has restrictions on you know, putting antennas up in the yard or things along those lines, and you only have your one local two meter repeater, or even worse, and, and bear with me here, I'm, trying, I'm gonna say this as nicely and delicately as possible, but I think, I think you'll be able to understand where I'm coming from with this. DMR is hard, even for us, it's, it's hard for people you know, our age and younger. Now try and have DMR for someone who's older. Now try and have DMR for someone who's older who is not close by that you can just walk over or even a short distance drive over, but somebody who's a couple of states away over, that's gonna be impossible to deal with. On these radios, you pick them up and you punch in a frequency. I wish they had an actual like spinny knob VFO, but punching in a frequency is good enough. One, four, six, well, I left off the four because I'm not wearing my glasses. Four, six, six, zero, zero, zero. And now I've connected to a talk group, four, six, six, zero, zero, zero. I'm on four, four, six. No, I'm on four, six, six, zero, zero, zero. Anybody out there? And I doubt there'll be anybody out there. But this is what ham radio used to be about, was spinning the dial and finding a frequency and making a random contact, people fishing. And now you can do people fishing again. And I think it'd be a lot easier just to say, Grandpa, turn the radio off, turn it back on, punch in 146.52 and you're, you're back on frequency and you're, you're back enjoying ham radio the way that you used to enjoy it. So that's my take on these things. I think that they're going to be extremely useful to help the older hams in our group. Again, I'm trying to be as respectful as possible, but you know what I'm trying to say here. Work their way through some of the quagmire, the miasma of new ham radio. Is that another word I just pronounced wrong? Miasma? Some people have kept up. Some people have not kept up. Some people just want to get on the radio and play. Some people just want to make voice contacts and talk to random strangers all over the planet. This scratches that itch. I think the next closest thing you could do that would be this simple would be Echo Link. So what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. Let me know where you think this fits into the ham radio hobby space. Do you agree with me that it's great for elderly people? Do you disagree with me and you think that they should learn DMR and write their own code plugs and compile their own software? And where do we go with something like this? Where do we go with ham radio as our population of hams gets older? I think this is a pretty good place. There will be links in the description down below where you can get one of these to play with. You can get more info. You can search the vham.net website and see what kind of talk groups you want to play in. I think it's going to be helpful to a certain segment of the population. And if it's not, there's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.